Welcome to another episode of Willow Tree Tales. Come and join me, Alara the Fairy Queen, for another enchanting story from the animals and the fairy folk in the Royal Parklands. Now settle down, get nice and cosy, and we'll begin. Now today's story is about one of the smallest animals of all in the Parklands. It's about Wanda Woodmouth. And this is called Wanda and the Fairy Ballet. Wanda Woodmouse lived with her mama, papa and five siblings in a cosy house at the foot of the oldest oak tree in the Royal Parklands. Tonight it was a special night. It was time for Wanda to decide on her big mouse dream. After supper, as they all sat around the big table by the fireplace with their little mouse bellies all full, Mama smiled at Wanda and said, Okay, Wanda, would you like to tell us what your dream is? Wanda glanced around at her parents and siblings. They all knew exactly what their dreams were. Mama and Papa had a restaurant they loved called the Pinecone Inn. Winifred, her sister, was learning to be a seamstress with lessons from Grandma Woodmouse. Woody, her brother, was becoming a wonderful violinist. Her other sister, Wilma, was a junior journalist at the Oak Tree Times newspaper. And the twins, Walter and William, were apprentices at the Mole family's wood workshop, learning to make fabulous wood furniture. They all knew exactly what they were doing all except Wanda. She sighed and looked down at her little hands in her lap. I, I'm sorry, Mama, I, I still don't know, she said sadly. Papa leaned across the table and took Wanda's hand. Don't you worry, my dear, he said. You'll know when you find it. But Wanda wasn't so sure. Later on, as she lay in bed looking up at the night sky, a teardrop trickled down her face and through her whiskers. What if I never find out what my dream is? She asked the moon in a quiet whisper. The next day, Wanda was still feeling quite sorry for herself. So Mama sent her over to Grandma Woodmouse's to deliver some treats. As she walked, she thought about all the things she had already tried to do. Painting, woodwork, playing the harp writing, even helping out at the inn. But none of these things felt like they were meant for her. By the time she arrived at Grandma's cottage, she was more confused than ever. Grandma Woodmouse was delighted to see Wanda, and they sat together in Grandma's big cosy armchairs, sharing the treats from the basket. Warm bread dipped in jam, and cups of hot apple juice with honey. Wanda tried her best to be cheerful, but Grandma knew immediately that there was something wrong. Wanda tried to explain, but she just burst into tears. Grandma knew just what to do. Come on, come here, she said, her arms open wide, and Wanda ran over and curled up in her soft, snuggly tummy fur as Grandma held her tightly. Now you listen to me, dear girl, she said tenderly. Dreams come to us when we are ready for them. You just carry on being your lovely, kind little self and I promise you, your dream will appear. Maybe in the last place you'd expect to find it. Just remember that most dreams require us to be very brave too. Wanda felt much better after that and as she was leaving, Grandma called her back with a little twinkle in her eyes and a pretty basket in her hands. Oh, Wanda, please could you take this to the fairy circle on your way home? Queen Alara is expecting this, but I'm just a little tired. Of course, Grandma said Wanda, but she was slightly nervous. She had never gone to speak to the fey folk without a grown-up before. Maybe now was the time, as Grandma said, that she had to start being brave. She kissed Grandma goodbye and with a deep breath followed the path that led to the fairy circle. 
As she turned a corner, she gasped. The many colourful toadstools that made up the circle looked incredibly tall and imposing suddenly. She was quite nervous as she approached and lingered outside wondering where she was supposed to leave the basket. When suddenly a voice spoke to her from inside the circle behind a toadstool. It was me. Hello, Wanda, I called out. Just bring them through here, please. Inside the circle, asked Wanda nervously. Her parents had sensibly always warned her to never walk into the fairy circle without permission. And I could see how nervous she was. So I walked out to greet her, offering my hand for her to join me. Yes, come little one, don't be nervous. You will be perfectly safe as I am inviting you in. I promise no harm will come to you. Wanda looked up at me with wide eyes, curtsied, took my hand and accompanied me into the fairy circle. As we passed through the toadstools, Wanda gasped as she watched everything change. Where there was once grass, there was now a shiny white polished floor and it was surrounded by blooming cherry blossom trees in pinks and whites. It was also full of chattering, excitable fairies, none of whom had been visible to Wanda from beyond the circle. And as I looked at her shocked little face, I explained, This is the beauty of fairy magic, Wanda. Within the fairy circle, we can create any space we choose and be perfectly safe, hidden away from the eyes of the human folk. Wanda, still awestruck, whispered, It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen, Your Majesty. I smiled at her. Then I rang the bell, summoning all the fairies over to where Wanda and I stood. Gather round, fairies, I called out. This is my young friend Wanda, and she has brought our costume straight from the finest seamstress in the Royal Parklands, Grandma Woodmouse. All the fairies rushed over and excitedly found their individual costumes in the basket and put them straight on. They were pretty ballet skirts in every colour imaginable. One of my best dancers, a fairy in vibrant green with short, bright red hair, smiled broadly at Wanda and made her feel at ease immediately. Hi Wanda, great to meet you, I'm Echo. Wanda smiled and nodded shyly as the fairy skipped away, tutu in hand. Then I had a wonderful idea. Would you like to watch the performance rehearsal, Wanda? The fairies are performing a ballet for tonight's Fay Ball. I think you might enjoy it. Wanda took a seat beside me and clasped her little hands together in delight and anticipation as the music started playing. The fairies wore their beautiful satin shoes with ribbons that crisscrossed up their legs and they began to dance across the floor. Their wings sparkled more than ever as they danced and when they spun in pirouettes, their wings fluttered as fast as a hummingbird's, lifting the fairies into the air. The little mouse was completely transfixed. I turned to her with a knowing smile. Well, what did you think of that, Wanda? Spectacular, aren't they? Wanda could barely find the words to express how she was feeling. She never knew such a thing existed. Oh! It was wonderful, just, just wonderful, she said, happy little tears glistening in her eyes. Thank you so much for allowing me to watch. Well, I thought, perhaps you should come and join the next class and then maybe you can take part in the next show, I suggested hopefully. Wanda's eyes grew round in astonishment. Me? Really? she asked. Well, I don't see why not, I replied. Be here an hour before sunset on Sunday evening. Wanda agreed immediately and scampered back through the toadstools into her normal world in the Royal Parklands with a huge grin across her face. And she had the brightest light in her eyes. As she burst through the door of the Woodmouse Cottage, the family were just gathering at the table for supper 
Mama, Papa, I found it, I found it, she gasped between breaths. I found my dream. Everyone looked at her expectantly. Wanda took a big breath and announced with a broad smile, I am going to join the fairy ballet. There was silence in the room for what felt like the longest time, interrupted by a loud cackle of laughter from the twins. Then the rest of her siblings joined in. Finally, Mama said, Wonder, darling, the, the fairy ballet. Are you quite sure about this? She nodded her head slowly, very confused. Yes, Mama, I, I don't understand why everyone finds it so funny. Walter snorted and shouted out, but you're not a fairy, you're a mouse. How can you be in the fairy ballet? And they all started laughing again, harder than ever. Wanda felt very upset and frustrated and the tears began to well up in her eyes as she clenched her little fists under the table. I don't know, she yelled back, but the queen told me I can, so I can, so there. Papa stood up then and ordered all the children except Wanda to leave and go back to their rooms. Mama held Wanda's hand and spoke gently. It sounds like you have been very lucky indeed today, Wanda. But I'm afraid I just don't understand how you can join the fairy ballet. But why not? asked Wanda. Because, said Mama, as your brother pointed out, you are not a fairy. You're a mouse and mice don't do ballet and they don't have wings or magic. But the Queen, cried Wanda. I know, said Mama, which is why we shall allow you to go to the classes. I'm sure Queen Alara has invited you for a reason, but I think you need to prepare yourself for the possibility that this is just a delightful bit of fun and not something you can do as a grown mouse. Wanda was extremely disappointed, but she decided not to think about it. And before she knew it, it was Sunday. As the toadstools came into view again, she stared at them in wonder watching as they began to illuminate one by one, a warm light emanating from underneath their large caps, casting an enchanting glow around the fairy circle. Wanda couldn't believe she actually had permission to enter this magical place. She stepped in through the toadstools, and as she shyly looked around her, a fairy skipped over. It was Echo. Hi, Wanda. I'm so happy you came. Come on, you can stand with me at the bar and I'll show you some of the exercises. Wanda was relieved to be welcomed so warmly and she followed Echo to the far wall with the mirrors where there was a long branch attached to them that everyone was holding on to. Before the class began, Echo showed her how to point her toes and how to do a funny little knee bend called a plie with a hand on the bar. Just copy me, whispered Echo from in front of her as the music began. Wanda had a marvellous time. Learning ballet wasn't easy, but it was so much fun and Echo was there to help her all the way through. She learned to do small leaps and to walk on her tippy toes and she even managed a small twirl without falling over. Of course there were some things that Wanda would never be able to do as they required wings and also she knew she had to wait until her legs were a lot stronger before she could walk on point, the very tips of her toes like the others. But she was so excited just to dance that she didn't mind at all. When class was finally finished, Wanda's little arms and legs ached like never before. But she skipped home with the biggest smile on her face and immediately began counting the days until it was time for the next ballet class. She was determined to become a great dancer and she practiced constantly, even in her sleep. Winifred and Wilma, her sisters, often giggled when they looked over to Wanda's bed from their own and they could see her little feet twitching and dancing under the blankets as she slept. <laughs> as the months passed, 
her hard work was really paying off in class and she was dancing beautifully. Wanda's legs and feet had grown much stronger now and one day, just after she had taken her ballet shoes off, I decided it was time she had a little surprise. I waved my wand and pointed at Wanda's feet. She felt magic swirl around her feet and in between her toes and tried not to giggle. Then she realized what was happening. Beautiful point shoes were forming on her feet and ribbons were curling themselves in place around Wanda's tiny mouse legs. It's time for you to dance like a real ballerina, Wanda. Well done, I announced. And there is one more thing. The fairies and I have decided that now you have your new shoes, we would like you to dance with us at the next fairy ball. A high-pitched squeak escaped from Wanda's nose as the excitement took over her and everyone laughed. Wanda agreed to work even harder than ever before. She hugged every fairy in the class and ran all the way home to tell her parents, clutching her beautiful new point shoes to her chest. Mama and Papa Woodmouse had only just got home after a very busy day at the Pinecone Inn when Wanda ran in, showing off her new shoes and telling them her good news. Well, goodness me, Wanda, said Papa. This is big news indeed. Well done. Wanda smiled proudly as Papa continued. But after this performance, it will be time for you to do less ballet and to focus more on what you're going to do as an adult mouse. A more sensible dream, okay? Wanda's bottom lip began to tremble. But Papa, my heart has never been so full. How can this not be my dream? Papa thought about it for a moment and then said, We understand that, we really do. There has never been a mouse or any other animal in the fairy ballet before, for very good reason. We would just like you to come up with another way you can follow your mouse heart and do what you love. No one has said you can't dance. Wanda felt very angry and frustrated and stood up and stamped her foot hard on the floor. If I can't be in the fairy ballet, how can I dance? And she ran up to her bedroom and curled up in a little mouse ball on her bed. Over the weeks that followed, Wanda was determined to prove to her parents that she really could be a permanent part of the fairy ballet. She wore her point shoes at every opportunity and practiced for hours and hours everywhere. One morning, as she was dancing on the grass outside her house, there was an excited chatter that arose from all around her. The parakeets were delivering very special mail. Rafferty Rabbit and his sister Rosie were scampering past, clutching a letter when they saw Wanda. Hey Wanda, called Rosie. All the animals of the Parklands have been invited to the Fae Ball for the first time ever. Can you believe it? It's so exciting! Wanda was thrilled and terrified all at once. She had hoped her family might be allowed to see her perform. But she didn't realise every animal from the Royal Parklands would be attending too. She knew she just had to work even harder now. She concentrated more than ever in class and learned every single dance routine by heart. Even in the moments the fairies flew to the ceiling and Wanda was left alone on the floor, I persuaded her to still practice the same routines that they were doing up in the air. She didn't understand why, but I had a very special plan in mind. On the day before the show, Grandma Woodmas had a very special gift for Wanda. Out of her basket, she lifted the most exquisite pair of fairy wings that sparkled and shimmered beautifully in the light. Wanda was speechless and hugged her grandmother tightly. Now just remember, they won't make you fly them, warned Grandma Woodmouth. I can't give you the magic, 
but I can give you wings. Wanda put them on and danced all around the cottage, wishing with all her heart that somehow her wings would have magic in them. Finally, it was the day of the ball. As each animal excitedly stepped foot into the tiny fairy circle, they were transported to an icy wonderland. An island stage was in the middle of a glittering lake, and there were large and small toadstools for seating all around the edges. The weeping willow trees surrounding the water were illuminated by tiny blue fireflies, and they had spectacular icicles hanging from them. Wanda peeped out at the audience from backstage and spotted her woodmouse family sat on special silver toadstools right at the front. She could barely breathe. Then the curtains opened, the music began, and she danced like she had never danced before, leaping and pirouetting and feeling the wind swirling around her body as she moved. Then came the moment she was dreading when all the fairies flew up into the air, leaving her on the ground dancing alone. She forced herself to keep up with the fairies soaring through the air above her, and she felt so light and free as she moved faster and faster across the floor. Then suddenly she realised her feet weren't actually on the floor at all. The wings Grandma had given her were fluttering all on their own, carrying her high up into the air with all the other fairies. The crowd gasped, but Wanda just carried on dancing the best she could, with no idea how she was flying at all. She swooped and soared in unison with all the other fairies and felt like she was dreaming. When the ballet ended, the little Woodmouse family were cheering louder than anyone else and Wanda was declared the star of the show. When the curtain closed, she was so happy and excited that she wasn't even tired at all. There was to be a lot of food and dancing afterwards, and she couldn't wait to go and have fun with her fairy friends after all their hard work. Especially now she was clearly a full member of the fairy ballet. She had no idea how Grandma had made her magic wings, but it didn't matter. Her dreams had come true. She found Echo sat on the ground taking off their ballet shoe. Echo, this is the best day of my life. Let's go and join the party. I'm going to leave my wings on so I can fly with you. Echo yawned and looked up at Wanda happily. You were great, Wanda. You flew and danced so beautifully. But now we'll walk, okay? Ooh. Wanda was disappointed. Well, no, let's fly. I want to fly everywhere, all the time. Watch me now. Wanda, wait, said Echo. But she wasn't listening. She tried to remember how to make her wings flutter again, but she couldn't remember. She tried to do the same dance routine again, ready to be lifted into the air, but that didn't work either. As she sat searching her mind for the secret, I wandered over. Wanda, what's going on? You should rest now. Wanda looked up at me from the floor. I can't remember how to make my wings work again. I smiled gently and kneeled on the floor beside her. They won't work because you're a lovely little mouse and not a fairy. I'm sorry, Wanda. Your wings aren't magical. You flew because every fairy in the ballet put all their magic together and made you fly. They care about you so much that they wanted you to have one night like a true member of the fairy ballet. Look at them, Wanda. They knew they wouldn't have energy left for the party, but they did that just for you. Wanda looked around the room and noticed that all her sweet fairy friends had fallen asleep right there, some of them in the middle of taking their shoes off. Her heart was overcome with love for these wonderful fairy folk. She watched as I used my magic to wrap them individually in warm moss blankets and send each of them home to their snuggly flower beds. Echo was the last, 
snoring quietly in the corner before disappearing into the night air. Would you like to fly one last time this evening, Wanda? I asked when I had finished. I have a little magic left. Wanda smiled, said it all, and with a flick of my wand, her wings fluttered into life again and carried her back out beyond the stage, over the water, and gently down at her parents' feet. Her siblings descended on her in loud squeaks and squeals, but although she was smiling, she couldn't help but feel a sense of sadness inside. Later on, she wandered away from the party and thought long and hard about her future at the fairy ballet. She knew she was always welcome there, but she would never ask her fairy friends to keep using all their energy and magic on her. Perhaps her parents had been right all along. She was a mouse. She wasn't supposed to be in the fairy ballet. Her little heart was breaking. She let the tears fall. The thought of never dancing again was just too much to bear. Suddenly, there was a noise from beyond the lamplight in front of her. Wanda quickly dried her face and whiskers and peered into the night air. Ah, there you are, my dear, came the voice of Grandma Woodmouth. As Grandma stepped into the light, Wanda could see at least a dozen young mice surrounding her. I have some young mice here who would love to know when the Wanda Woodmouse Ballet Company is going to be opening. She looked at Wanda, gave her a warm smile and a little wink. The Wanda Woodmouse Ballet Company opened the following spring and they quickly became the most successful mouse ballet company ever. They danced all over the land and once a year they performed with the fairy ballet for the Woodland Ball. And Wanda realised she had followed her parents' advice in the end. She had followed her heart to do something she loved and she didn't have to stop dancing at all. She just had to find a way that was right for her. And she did. The end. Oh, isn't that lovely? So you see, you can be anything you want to be. But sometimes you just have to do it a little bit differently from what you first thought. But anything is possible. As you found out, didn't you, Wanda? Thank you so much for joining us here in the old weeping willow tree. We'll see you again next time for another willow tree tale. Good night.